just gotta get out of my head a bit out of the negative out of the pessimist posture of doubt where everything's relative and everyone is my nemesis yeah i just gotta get out of my bed again get back in the game though i might never win the fight might never end and nothing is forever every day is heaven sent and everything is better when i'm out of my head the second i'm stepping out whenever i look at you the second i left the house the scent of the fresh air the wind that carries us the feeling will get there when we deal with what's real can't numb the pain to heal one must feel the hurt for a season but it hurts for a reason done dreaming now i'm searching for meaning out of my head Out of the pessimist posture of doubt where everything's relative and everyone is my nemesis. Yeah, I just gotta get out of my bed again. Look out my window, see through a better lens. Look up to the sky, look up to better men. The brethren are getting together, I'm getting out of my head. Not everyone gets to live, death is definite, the rest ain't guaranteed. Life is a gift we get to give, the world is desperate for us. I can't let it get out of my head. I can't see truth, but I can see proof. The world's not lost. Whenever I see you, believing in magic, I believe that we have it. See that trick, poof, I'm out of my head. And I'm glad to be alive, glad to see the sky, the sun, I see it rise. The love I keep inside is why I need a rhyme, I need to breathe a sigh and let it out. Not where you land your private airplane 
How many blood diamonds shining in that chain? How much compromise is tied to that fame? How many more times we gotta hear that lane? Lie, I'm inspiring them to do what? Roll better weed and get higher than them? Feed the needy, greedy ass buyer in them? Be the same damn dog with the fighter women? They gon' tell me that I'm preaching to the choir in them. Showed it right, but I'm trying to light a fire in them. Cause I was raised by the enemy. Ever since then, that's been my identity. So I'm trying to give back what was given me. Truth flow, delivery is my tendency. You flow the spirit up in my energy. Bottom of my feet is something that you'll never see. That's cause I'm standing, singing the anthem. This from my hand, the list of demands. When they hear this, might piss in their pants. Try to get the children not to listen to the man. But the mighty PE is what birthed I live. So what you think gon' come out? everyone and welcome to session three of the global black feminist reading circle my name is randy henderson and i am one of the black feminist reading circle members of this online group this session runs from january 20th until june 2nd and includes two week long breaks our democratically selected reading material is harriet a washington's book medical apartheid the dark history of medical experimentation on black americans from colonial times to the present our book group meets each Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 on the Google Plus Hangouts on Air Platform. You may find the, Glo the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle on Google Plus, YouTube, and Facebook. And always feel free to join us in reading our story together. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Global Black Feminist Reading Circle, uh, Session 3. Uh, uh, Tuesday, January the 20th to June the 16th, um, our session will be from 6.30 to 8 p.m. I am your moderator today. Uh, this is meeting 18, June the 9th, 2015. My name is Joel Jones. I'd like to welcome everyone uh, that's on uh, YouTube, Facebook, the whole nine yards. Um, like I said, my name is Joel Jones. I'm the moderator. The co-hosts are um, Michelle Oldham and Randy Henderson. And um, I would like at this time, we'd like to introduce uh, all the members of the groups. Uh, we'll start from the furthest south and we'll work our way up north. Oh, Georgia. That, okay, that must be me. Okay. I'm um, Georgette Moses, uh, participating from Columbia, South Carolina. And I'm glad to be here. Welcome. Hi, my name is Randy. I'm watching from Atlanta. And if you missed it last week, I'm sure it'll be mentioned at the end of this, but our next book is Parable of the Sawyer by Octavia. Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm in Brooklyn. And good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello, everybody. And I'm also in Brooklyn, New York. My name is Michelle Odom. How you doing, Michelle? I'm good. Uh, hi, my name is Vivian Walker, and I am joining you from uh, Cromwell, Connecticut. Welcome. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the epilogue here, medical research uh, with uh, Blacks Today. Harriet Washington has exposed in detail the misuse of black Americans as the convenient subjects of profitable medical research. They were powerless, maligned, and abused 
not strictly for scientific knowledge, but to support American cultural beliefs, politics, and economic trends. The social and legal landscape has changed dramatically from the times of slavery, and medical research practices have followed suit. It's safer for African Americans to participate in clinical trials and necessary. However, we must be informed, vigilant, and actively engaged in the process. We must guard against the erosion of informed consent and the laws that protect us. She warns that colonialism, residual racism, and classism have allowed Western medical researchers to continue their abuse on the vulnerable people in Africa and other non-white colonies and territories. Washington offers some solutions to improve the quality of medical research for African Americans, which would also positively affect other communities. Finally, she outlines challenges that will enable African Americans to not only survive, but hopefully thrive while interacting with the American medical system. Uh, this is the epilogue here, medical research uh, with uh, blacks today. And this is the end of a very, very difficult book. And I'm sure everybody is ready to move on. Uh, yeah. I found I found I found the book quite interesting. Um, uh, it, it's a hard book, uh, but like I said uh, before, uh, you know this is the kind of stuff that a lot of us, you know, we read, you know, in uh, Black history, read a lot. I read a lot of this kind of stuff, but not, at, you know, maybe on a macro level, but not on a micro level. And this is you know, most definitely digging into what has happened to us as a people. But, um, you know, we see this this type of thing, uh, you know, in, you know, you see this type of the treatment in human services, but a lot of times we don't see this type of thing unless it's really happening to us or you're here, somebody, you know, with some kind of atrocity and whatnot. But it's most definitely a, a difficult book and, how someone can really have a lot of faith in a lot of things, I really don't know. But when I um, read, you know, as I read the book, I think you all, uh, uh, one thing that I notice about her, she always seemed to me to either um, kind of, what I would say, take the spotlight off the atrocities or give us hope or placate into the system to somewhat. What, what are your thoughts on that when she, uh, when she makes some of the comments and, you know, her, you know, it seems to be her positive outlook on the system, uh, the medical system and about joining research? I was really shocked when I read it. I unplanned. I had to make sure I read it right. I make sure I wasn't like zoning out um, when I read that she thinks that we should participate in active research um, and that there's a way to do so with informed consent because what I got from this book was that there's no way to um, yeah. participate with informed consent because there's always something that's going to be left out and we really have to, I think what she's asking is to really put faith in somebody to believe that they're telling you everything, the good and the bad, and I don't really know if that's possible after reading this book. Um, so I, I thought it was, I don't know, if this was what her ultimate argument was at the end, I would have liked if she, I don't know, like with each chapter put some type of experiment that went right or something, but she mm -hmm. never had that throughout the whole book. We're hearing about, you know, all these people that died and have been hurt in all these court cases just to have her at the end tell us to participate. I don't know. That's that's how I took it. I was I still don't know after reading how to actively volunteer and participate. 
to, um, but mainly because I don't know if I could trust somebody to really tell me everything, even if I ask, even if I know the questions to ask, can I really depend on this person, this researcher, to tell me something that will ultimately benefit their research and not, you know, probably not at first myself. So. Mm. How about you, Vanita? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, unmute your mic. We can't hear you. You're, You're muted. muted. I'm sorry. I'm trying to print out the agenda. I just pulled it up, so I have to pass on this one. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure that I didn't pass you by this time. I mean, you know, I want to make sure we get you at the top of the hour here. I'm glad you're paying attention, Joel. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I. Okay. Cam, Georgette, your comments. Um, I, I guess I agree with Randy. I think that maybe there's a chapter missing where she was holding <laughs> some of the successful ways that we have advocated to be in research without being harmed. But I didn't see that chapter, so I don't know how she jumped to, you know, how we should support this. Mm. <laughs> Georgia? Yeah, there was a preponderance of information, damning information, <laughs> that should scare the pants off of everybody. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it kind of felt, I have to echo what you said, both of you guys said about you know, it seemed like she kind of threw that, oh, but but by the way, <laughs> it's not all bad. There's something you can do at the end just so we don't run run out screaming with our hair on fire. I, don't know. I, think, I think it was more or less like a, um, in my opinion, um, okay, um, you write this book and now black folk aren't participating. It's kind of like a disclaimer. Don't sue me or don't come after me with your black cops type, you know, mm -hmm. government goons and everything, you know. <laughs> so, um, Georgette, could you read uh, where we but, are but, today? But before yes, you, before yes, you move on, let me, let me respond to that, that yeah. question. Um, because, of course, you know, I see it a little bit differently. And the first time I read the book, I felt exactly like you all feel. Um, when I got to the epilogue, but this time, I, th this time I had more questions about it. I mean, you, you've heard me say that that um, Vanita and I have questioned kind of throughout this reading who her audience is. Um, and I, and I really think that she wrote with a narrow audience in mind. I don't think she was writing um, to the general black community, to the average black person. You know, first of all, we don't have a reputation for doing that much reading. Um, and if we do read, um, you know, our reputation is not that we're going to pick up a scholarly book like this, but you know, I don't know, Slim Jim something. Or other. So I don't, I don't think we really were the audience. I think she was writing to medical researchers, and if that's true, then they already know what positive things can come out of medical research. So she wouldn't need to make that case for them. The other thing is that, did you all see, just have a chance to skim at that last item that I posted last night on the Google Plus page? It was an article about human experimentation. Mm -hmm. And it I didn't, I, you know, I really, I kind of started reading it and then I saw how long it was, so then I just started skimming it. Um, but mostly it's not about experimentations with African Americans. It's about all the other people that Harriet Washington did not focus on. So, you know, so, and, and it's lengthy. It, 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 is, it is lengthy. 
Um, she does, the, the article does mention a few of the things that we learned about in the book, but I'm just saying, as much as we learned, this really kind of just scratches the surface of, of how bad it is. So she was focused on the African American experience. Well, I, and, yeah, and, 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 and so, so I just, I think that, I think that there's something to what she was saying about we really need the, the knowledge that comes out of medical experiments, but we've got to figure out how to be informed consumers about it. And so I don't think it's just a matter, Randy, of um, believing what the researcher or the doctors tell you. Um, I, I think we have to be much more actively engaged in the learning process ourselves if we're going to involve ourselves in clinical trials. I, I, um, I believe that um, I don't know if her, if the book was on a, a, narrow, a narrow scope um, of maybe whomever wanted, I mean, if it's healthcare providers or, you know, uh, public servants, people in human services or whatever. But I do believe, she, like you, you know, like you said in your, you know, your last post, in your last posting, she was telling a story about us that was not being told. You know, uh, you know, and that's often the case when you look at a lot of a lot of atrocities through our history. You know, the story hadn't been told, and when you see these people, uh, what's that movie that come out? That, I mean, that story that, that I mean that. Um, that series is out now about uh, uh, American experimentation. I think, Georgia, you had mentioned it one time before. You know, all the people on that particular uh, series is nothing but Caucasian. You, you understand what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're not even, there's not any black people on there, you know. So I think she's telling a story that no one has told before. And I think that story had begun with us and slavery that when slavery went away those bodies went away and they just start snatching other people <laughs> you know whether the prison population or the homeless it's just my opinion yeah yeah, yeah. I mean that's 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 possible but I, I would say also you know there are a lot more black doctors than there used to be I don't know if we can say we have a lot, but we have some. And while I don't, I certainly absolutely don't think that we should automatically trust people just because they have, you know, a little extra melanin in their skin. Yeah, they can't um, do that. You know, we, we know we can't, we know we can't do that. Um, but I think that, that we should try to hold Try to try to hear what she's saying about we need the research we, because the real research because the real research hasn't been done because of you know all of this craziness that where the research was focused you know drapedomania and <laughs> perpetual knee benders and it, 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 you know the the madness that was been done but the real research. And then if you think about the Human Genome Project and, you know, all the possibilities that come out of that very new science, um, I'm not sure it's a good idea for us to be absent at the table. I, I don't, you know, and I, I, I agree. I agree with every, everything you're saying. But I'm kind of like, when you see, I mean, you know, I guess it's the, it, you know, it's the Western model in the Western system, you know, uh, of medicine in itself that, um, you know, and especially, now we don't even have the community hospitals that we used to have. They're all corporate hospitals. So when you got corporations that are involved into this research and they're not, you know, you know, in the beginning on the university campus, it may be experimentation for the better mankind. But now you got to look at these guys at these big corporations, they're pressing the dollar. 
I, I just don't know, man. I, you know, I, do you want to trust a system that's it's all about it? <laughs> it's very, you know, so, but I, you know, as we go forward, I understand, you know, the education part, you know, it's almost like it's, it's the system we got, and it's going to be the system for the next two or three hundred years. Nothing going to bring it down. You know, so I get, I do get all, I do get that. So if we can move along, uh, Georgia. That's, mm -hmm. I think since she's written this book, a lot of, there's been a lot of changes, and um, uh, getting consent to be to be a participant in trials or experimentation. Has anyone thought about our insurance companies? There has been a lot of changes in the way our insurance, health insurance industry does business. You are being experimented on without your consent. Every time that insurance company says, you know what, Benita, you don't need Plaquenil, a brand name. Before we can consider giving that to you, we want you to try this. Oh, yeah. We want you to try that. Now, 100,000 people. It's a random number is trying this and trying that. And that is being compiled on you. Now, this may work equally well for 50,000 of those people, but the other 50,000 of those people need that brand name. However, that 50,000 that works well enough for is good enough for them to keep those profit high. Meanwhile, the other 50,000 on the other side that actually need that brand name are falling by the wayside and not getting the full benefit or any benefit or half benefit of that brand name drug they actually need. So consent, a non-consent, I believe, is still going on, except it's not always the Frankenstein doctor anymore. They don't always wear white jackets. It's your insurance company. They have oh, doctors yeah. on staff. In the utilization review department, what sits around and compiles all this data and all these numbers and decides who's going to live or die, who's going to take the the generic heart, you know, heart medicine, and who's not. They got the doctors. They're going to hold them up with a gun. Either you're going to do what I say, or you're not getting paid. So I think there are a lot more culprits since she wrote this book because mm -hmm. of the change in the health industry than just the doctors and just the scientists. We have a lot more to worry about. Yeah, I'm just bringing up that possibility is not remote because I'm a part of the system and I've seen it and I'm a part of actual that happening to me and many other people that I know. So oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. may be something else that we might want to look at um, for our audience and for ourselves is our insurance companies are now in control of experiments without consent and you probably don't know that you're an experiment to decide whether or not it's good for their profits, who's going to get, who's not, who benefits and who doesn't. And of course that comes back down to the generic is $200, $35 a month for one month supply. The brand name is $400 and some odd dollars a month. So they made the decision that 50% is enough not to allow others to get the brand name. However, the folks that can afford to get that brand name and have that doctor write that prescription don't have to go through the insurance company and get the brand name medication. So it still puts us at a, a very big disadvantage without consent and no way to do any research, mind you. True that. Just something to think about. Mm -hmm.
trying to give back.